Jake Tapper here. Uh, let's go back to the breaking news out of Turkey, what the prime minister there is calling an attempted uprising and what looks increasingly like an attempted coup. Barbara Starr is standing by at the Pentagon. Barbara, what's going on? It sounds as though the military might be trying to get control of the government in Turkey. Is that accurate? Well, uh, across Washington, agencies are scrambling uh, to figure out exactly what is going on. It at least appears from some of the video coming out of Turkey that some Turkish forces, we don't know how high this goes, have attempted some kind of operation tonight in Turkey, both in the capital of, Istan uh, of Ankara and in Istanbul. Now, uh, the implications are just enormous here. Whether this is a successful coup or not, we do not know. But if the Turkish government is not in full control of its military, this has massive security implications for NATO. Turkey is a member of NATO. It has massive security implications for the United States. U.S. warplanes fly out of southern Turkey every day on missions to bomb ISIS targets in Syria and Iraq. Tonight, we see some evidence that Turkish planes outside of their own government's control were also flying. You can't have U.S. planes flying in a country where the government is not in control of its military. If it is a coup, it will trigger legal restrictions. The U.S. military cannot be seen to support a coup. The U.S. military will have to uh, get some kind of decision about whether it can even stay in Turkey. Uh, it, it raises questions about Turkey as a, a stable NATO partner. Turkey is on the southern flank of NATO. They control international shipping in and out of the Bosporus. Uh, and north into the Black Sea. That is a government function in Turkey. It will have shipping implications. There are Turkish air control, military air control radars that are part of NATO's southern flank. Very important for keeping watch on shipping traffic in the Mediterranean and possible movement of some of these refugee flows that have been so concerning out of Syria and North Africa. Concerns about keeping eye on possible terrorist activity. You know, you could just go on and on. Turkey is in such a strategic location between the Middle East and Europe and North Africa. It is really in the crosshairs of the fight against ISIS, the fight against international terrorism. And tonight, the White House, the Pentagon, and NATO clearly are not sure exactly who is in charge in that country and whether there has been an attempted coup and whether it has been fully put down. Jake? All right, Barbara Starr, stay with us. I want to bring in uh, CNN Chief National Security Correspondent uh, Jim Schuto. Uh, Jim, this is potentially very significant uh, news if, if the only Muslim-majority country in NATO uh, and a country that the United States relies upon so much when it comes to the fight against ISIS, uh, if there is, in fact, an attempted coup there. What are your sources? NATO you? member and on the front lines in the fight against yeah. ISIS, Turkey, of course, on Sharing the border with Syria. So events just in the last five minutes here. The Turkish military has now issued an announcement, widely reported in the Turkish media, that it has overthrown the government, overthrown the government of President Erdogan. It says that it has detained the leadership of the government. So you have the military claiming it has taken over the country. Of course, earlier you had the Turkish PM calling this uh, an attempted coup. He later backed off the word coup. He called it a mutiny, saying that some units, some groups within the military were attempting uh, a coup, a mutiny, as he said, uh, but that it would be put down. So you have competing narratives now. The prime minister, the existing government, saying attempted coup, we will defeat it. You have the military claiming to have successfully taken over the government. And you have this enormous show of force. I mean, the, the open question is, is the force we're seeing entirely from units disloyal to the government, or could some of them possibly be loyal to government? Th that's an issue now. What do U.S. officials know? I've sp spoken to officials in the White House, the State Department. It is early. They don't know the final word on this. I, I was just told that Secretary John Kerry, who is traveling uh, in the region now, has been briefed on this. Um, but right now, the U.S. government is still trying to assess the reports. One more thing I would say is when you get to the government of Erdogan, this, he's been a fairly divisive leader, popular leader. He's won multiple elections. Uh, but there are quarters in the country that are not comfortable with him, including the military, with a couple of things. One, he's taken the country in an Islamic direction more than previous leaders, uh, which has faced some opposition. 
but also into an anti-democratic direction. At least that's what critics inside say. He's in prison, in prison journalists. Uh, he shut down publications unfavorable to the government. Uh, he shut has down social media. Shut down social media, apparently in the midst of this right now uh, as well. Well, he hasn't done that, but apparently the coup, coup takers have done that. Uh, he's, he's arrested dissidents, uh, this kind of thing. So you, you have opposition to him, some that's been very vocal. And historically, in Turkey, the military has been something of a self-appointed uh, protector of democracy, that, that they have come in at times when they felt that the democracy is threatened and the, and the military's, you know, treated itself as the guarantor of democracy in the past. Of course, you know, there, there are questions about having the military take over a democratically elected government. Uh, uh, but right now, U.S. officials are, are trying to monitor what is a very fluid situation. All right, Jim, stay here. I, I want to bring in freelance reporter Andrew Finkel, who is in Istanbul, uh, Turkey. Andrew, we last spoke uh, after the terrorist attack at the airport there. Uh, there are reports yeah. that state TV has been shut down. Can you confirm that? And, and what can you tell us? Um, I, I'm not watching state TV. I can't tell you that. But what I can tell you is that there have been incredible rumblings going on uh, ahead of what of tonight's events. Um, so although they have taken us by surprise, I won't deny that, uh, perhaps we should have been prepared. I mean, what uh, the background to all this is that um, Mr. Erdogan has been very consistent, very clever, very determined in trying to grab the nodes of power in Turkish society. He's moved against the press, he's moved against the courts, and he's um, was now apparently trying to move against the military itself. And we've had reports in the pro-government press in the last few days ahead of an event at the beginning of August in which there's a there's a, uh, it happens every year in the beginning of August when new military appointments are made. And we know that the government was very keen uh, this particular August to weed out its opponents in the military and to put, put its men in place. So the fact that, that, you know, we don't know exactly what's happening now, but if there is this serious coup attempt going on now, it does make sense in the context of the military trying to Remain, retain its coherence, retain its integrity against um, the, uh, the government's uh, attempts this August to, to change the guard. In, in, general, in general terms, um, when uh, er Erdogan has been uh, caught between those who want him to be more secular, more democratic, uh, more like Europe, and those mm. who are more Islamic, Islamist, uh, to adhere more to Islamic law uh, and, and to be less secular and, and less um, westernized. Um, in simple terms, on what side is the military? Well, the military, I mean, that's one way of looking at Turkish politics, that, that Erdogan has this Islamic agenda, that the military have a secular agenda, and that the two are bound to clash. But another way of looking at it is that both want to control the nodes of power in Turkish society. And Mr. Erdogan, is, whether he's secular or whether he's Islamic, is very determined to get all the levers in his own hands. And, oh, you know, the, and he's been pretty successful in, in controlling institutions like even the judiciary. Um, but obviously the military is the last bastion, the last resistance to his attempt to uh, really control the entirety of Turkish society. And uh, they clearly, um, some of them, at least, have chosen this evening to fight back. Andrew, stay with us.